Hello everyone and welcome to another Pro Tipster Football Podcast. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy, joining me is Pro Tipster Dan, and the Champions League is back! Woo! Can't wait, can't wait. I've, job, missed, job. <laughs> I've missed doing these uh, uh, early um, Monday, Tuesday podcasts, Dan. I've missed them, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, I love the Champions League. Uh, I'm gonna sound like <laughs> such a football hipster, but in some ways I'm a bit meh about it. But it, 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 the, this um, this round of fixtures does promise to be quite decent because the knockout knockout's always better. It's always better when there's like a, a you know it's win or go bust. Um, I don't like the group stages. I, I, I prefer knockout. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great if they went back to the, to the old days and it was just knockout from the beginning, you know? Yeah, I'd love that. I'd yeah. love that. I'd, I, you know, and I'd love it if, like, Real Madrid went out to, like, the Kosovo champions or something like that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it should be about. Oh, exactly. But of course, it's money, yeah. and they need Real Madrid and Barcelona and whoever else play as many games as possible, so blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Exactly. But anyway, look, we're into the we're into the best part of it now. We're into the knockouts, and uh, let's have. So, what we're going to do, listener, uh, we're just going to have a chat about the four matches that are coming up, and uh, and then obviously next week, then we'll be back and we'll speak about the other ones. Um, before we get into it, though, Dan, uh, the, uh, who would be your favorite to? Uh, no, who would be your two finalists? Two finalists. Yeah. Oh God, that's a tough one. Um, because I don't know, has the quarterfinal draw been made yet? No, 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 it won't be until after. I, I didn't know if they've made it already. So, um, based on current form, Man City, and I'd love to see a Man City Juve final. Mm. Um, but, um, so let, let, let's, let's go through why I wouldn't think the others. Um, Real Madrid just aren't good enough this year, and I think they might go out to PSG, but PSG aren't, I don't think they're that great shakes away from France. Munich, I just hate them. I just hate Bayern <laughs> Munich. And I want the shit just to stuff them. True, true fact. Um, <laughs> you know. We, we were having this, this discussion at the weekend about how Lewandowski's too scared to play for anyone else but Munich does he get kicked to shreds. Yeah, that's true. It's absolutely true. Definitely. Um, Barcelona, mm, I could see them going well. They're going to beat Chelsea. But again, I don't like them. Mm. Um, it comes from me not liking Messi. So... Sorry. Um, Manu, I think, should dispatch Sevilla, but I don't think they're any great shakes. And I think Roma will get past Shakhtar, but, yeah, I think I, th- I don't think they're that strong either. So, yeah, I'd like to see a Juve-Man City final, please. Juve, say, Juve could be in their third final in four years then, and they'd still probably lose. They're awful on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, so let's get on to it then. So, uh, Basel and Man City first. Uh, do you want some odds, Dan, or...? Um, hit me with some, well, I've, I've got a vague idea, Man City might be favourites to win. Uh, Man City are, yeah, they are favourites to win here. So Basel 9.44, the draw 5.06, Man City to win 1.35, over 2.5 goals 1.57, unders 2.41, and you'd have to go to over 3.5 and you'd get 2.41. Uh, for over 3.5 goals. Both teams to score 1.86. Maybe there's something value there. Asian handicap is uh, plus or minus 1.5 goals. And you would get Man City minus 1.5 goals at 1.98. So just almost evens. Well, the goals market's moved since this morning. Because um, under 2.5 goals at about 10 o'clock this morning was 2.25. Oh, and it's wow. now 2.41. So yeah. it's moved. moved a lot. It's moved considerably. Yeah. Um, I think that might be something to do with the fact that Leroy Sane is fit to travel, apparently. Okay, that's good. Which is unbelievable, bearing in mind how bad the injury was that he got from uh, that tackle in the uh, um, in the FA Cup against mm. uh, Cardiff City. But apparently he's fit enough to travel. I, I don't think he'll start, but wow. Yeah. Um, they, they have got a couple of doubts. I know that uh, David Silva has got uh, a bit of a knock and is a doubt. They're hoping Fabian Delph will come back, but to be honest with you, I think I would be better off playing Danilo anyway. Um, John Stones could play in centre back. And the thing is, Man City's next game after this is Wigan in the cup. Ugh. So it's not like they've got a tough game coming after it either. So it, they, they really can play their first choice. Um, Basel, um, they come to the game. They, they won the, they've only had two games in the Swiss League after the, the uh, winter break. Um, so they won at the weekend against Thun. Son, I think it's pronounced. I don't know, but that's their um, bottom but one, the Swiss Super League, and they played Lugano at home in the first week back, 
and they lost. So, you know, their form's a bit patchy at the moment. Um, yeah, before the break, they, they, I think they went three or four without, without, uh, five it was, like wins on the spin, but obviously the momentum stopped because, you know, they have a month off and they've got to get back up to speed and they're playing a Man City side that just like scoring for fun. Um, I, I can't see anything but a Man City win. I, I'd probably take Man City at minus 1.5. Um, but I might wait for the lineups because I'm curious as to who he's going to play up front for them. Um, I'm curious where they go. I mean, I would think they would go Bernardo Silva, Aguero, and then Sterling, but I'm not sure. Against Leicester, Man City had three kids on the bench. They had Brahim Diaz, Lucas Nemecha, and Phil Foden. Phil Foden actually came on and set up the fifth goal, which, um, if you've not seen it, was an absolute blockbuster from uh, Aguero. Yeah, it was magic. You know, Amazing goals where it smacks off the underside of the bar and comes in. Mm. Love a goal like that. Like it's the kind of game that maybe you know before he would he would have been tempted to to maybe arrest Aguero because you know Basin's not much of a threat I suppose. But like but now after him scoring four goals, like you couldn't rest him because it, no, it, it's just illogical, you know. Yeah, and um, the the only other thing that I, I just want to check on because I know um, St Jacob Park isn't it's not the uh, easiest place to play, and I'm just checking. Yeah, it's a grass surface. I wondered if it might be all purpose, okay, um, or all, all weather, because I know that a couple of stadiums in Switzerland are, but no, this one's this one's grass, mm. so it should be fine. Um, but yeah, it's a tough place to go and play, I think, because um, other English teams haven't done so well there in the past. But um, I think Man City are good enough. So, ah, yeah, should be. Yeah, did, but Basel had had a great record a while ago, and 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 didn't they beat Man United as well in Old Trafford a couple of years ago, didn't they? Uh, yeah. Um, d- 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 uh, no, they beat them at St Jacob's Park. They oh, okay. lost three 0 at Old Trafford. Sorry, uh, last last season Either that way. was. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is exactly my point. You know, you look at um, so if you look at their Champions League home games, they beat Man City. Uh, they beat Benfica five 0 but then they lost to Arsenal 4-1, they lost to Chester Moscow 2-1, they lost to PSG 2-1. You know, it, it, it's a, it, it's one of those grounds where it could be tough, it might not be. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I, I, you can't rule them out. I don't think you can rule them out um, at this point, just based on the fact, you know, um, that Man City are that much better a team because... It's whether it's, it's, it's what Man what Man City will do. When if you remember, they rocked up to Shakhtar um, with like half a team because they were resting players and they got they got beaten. Yeah, they got beaten. Yeah. Yep, yep. So you can't rule it out, but I I, I think they've got enough for yeah, it. I'd I say it's it's the type of game though. I, I, you'd imagine Pep is going to play a full team because if they can, if they can go out here and win, you know, two, three, four, one or nil. Then mm. you know they can take the foot off the off off the gas then and, and the second leg and they're not really under any pressure because they have so many away goals they're fine they're true you know well yeah I mean before the second leg they've got um oh if you look if you look at their so it's Wigan next week and the week after it's the League Cup final against Arsenal mm. then Arsenal midweek Chelsea at home and then Basel so yeah they they they're gonna want to they're gonna want to rack up a few away goals yeah definitely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just just to take the pressure off yeah so yeah. So what, what, um, uh, so what we said is, so you go with the handicap or overs? I'm going with the handicap. handicap. Okay. Minus 1.5. Yeah. Minus 1.5 around the evens. Alright then, let's go on to, uh, the second match for tomorrow. So the big one, the old lady are taking on Spurs, Juventus versus Tottenham. Um, uh, Dan, it's, uh, Juventus at, at evens at home. That's, that's tempting, isn't it? It is tempting. It is really tempting because Juve's home record is phenomenal. Um, I know they lost to Lazio uh, back in October, but that was the first defeat at home in the league for a while. Um, but in the Champions League, they, they got, um, you know, they got beaten by, oh, shoot, who was, no, no, it wasn't the Champions League, was it? It was uh, the Super Cup. They lost to Lazio yeah, in the well, final. Yeah. Of course, yeah. they lost to Real Madrid. But, you, yeah, you, you look at their um, their home record and it's unreal. They haven't they lost. They it, haven't lost at home in the Champions League since they changed stadium. There you go. Then. That's mad, isn't it? <laughs> but but uh, Juve's problem is is they've got injuries. Um, like Bozaglia apparently didn't train Sunday morning. Uh, he's got a calf knock and he's a major doubt for the game. 
and he's like real experience at the back. You got a Spurs side who, okay, they've drawn quite a few, they've drawn the last three away games, I think, but Harry Kane still on fire, who have got, I think their, their only injury concern is out of Ireland and he reckons he's fit to play. He's just, uh, Pochettino doesn't believe him. Um, and you look at the way they played against Arsenal the weekends, that they, yeah, they won 1-0, but they could have won by five. Yeah. Um, but Juve, t- t- uh, even at home, I'd be tempted just because Juve is so good at home. And because I don't think Spurs are that good away. Um, you know, uh, I'm just looking. Yeah, Champions League, they lost, of course, to Monaco away. Um, I'm trying to think who they've played Italian in the past. Hmm. They played Milan, didn't they? And they beat them. Yeah. I remember that game mm-hmm. because that was the first English team to beat uh, to winning the San Siro since Birmingham City in 1959, I think we won there. There you oh, go. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, Spurs, they don't have a good, great away record at all. But, um, you know, I, I, I know that the Italian press, because friends of mine, Italian friends of mine have been telling me that the, the Juventus are really scared of Harry Kane, especially. Really scared mm. of him. Because he doesn't, what I mean, uh, you know, there's no one really like him in Italy that they can test themselves out against. Okay, okay, what well, um your man um Immobile is having a great season at Lazio but different type of player. Uh, uh what's his name? Bellotti at uh, Torino is not the same player who was last season. They would be the best proper, you know, uh, old school strikers in, in the Italian league. Uh, Napoli Napoli are just all attackers. There's no real proper well I suppose Patrice Mertens but he's not really a proper striker. You know, Harry Kane is a proper old school stri- striker and when, when, you know, it, it, it's uh, for me. It's really interesting how the likes of, of Cellini and all are going to react against him. You know, because they, the, the everyone, a lot of people think the Juventus defense are, are slow, but they're not. They're they're well able to match anyone. Um, it's just the uh, you know Madrid and, and and Barca in the finals. They did have to beat them, but they're they're just a step above, or they were anyway, a step above everyone else. Um. I don't know. I, I I watch a lot of Juventus, and I think they would will be able to to keep Kane under wraps. But then again, Harry Kane can do nothing for eighty seven minutes and then pop up and score a header. You know, yeah, he's that type of player, and and he's someone who like we saw with the uh, the penalty against Liverpool. He's someone who has this great belief and confidence in himself that okay, if something goes wrong the first time, and if he gets a second chance, he'll take it. You know. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you. I'm just looking at the uh, way uh, um, Juve lined up against Fiorentina. Because uh, Lichtsteiner, Benatia, Cellini, and uh, Alex uh, Alexandro mm-hmm. as their as their uh, as a former Benatia's had Benatia's had a really good season, but I, I would be tempted to think just looking at that back line, it is going to be quite slow. Mm. Um, Lichsteiner's your weak link there. That's who I'd, I'd be throwing everything at him. Hmm. You know? but, well, that's the thing. They, and they took uh, Lichsteiner off for Barzaglia, uh, for Barzaglia, and he's injured. Yeah. So, so they can't. Probably uh, they're missing him. him. Yeah. Uh. So then, decision time, Dan. Uh, you vote. You vote to win. You vote to I'm win. gonna go with it. Good you vote to win. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Right then, uh, let's go on to what is probably the, 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 the least attractive of the ties in this round, um, or, or of Wednesday, or this week anyway. Uh, Porto are taking on uh, Liverpool. Uh, I'll give you the odds. Porto, 3.07. The draw, 3.46. Liverpool to win 2.34. Overs, 1.76. Unders, 2.07. Both teams to score 1.6. And the handicap is plus 0.25. Well, Porto are another team that have got an amazing home record. Uh, the last time they lost domestically at home was 2016. April 2016. Um, they've lost two competitive matches in 46, I think, at home, both in the Champions League. Um, one of them was to Besiktas in the group stages, 3-1. The other one 
was at this stage in last year's competition was to Juve. They uh-huh. lost 2-0. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is the thing that um, Porto have got to be careful of because they know um, that this is their chance to get past Liverpool. Their only way they're going to get past them is to hold them to a, a draw or a good result at the, you know, or a win for them at uh, Estadio do Drago. Uh, Estadio do Dragao, sorry. Um, but you look at Liverpool on the other hand, um, they won again at the weekends. Uh, their form's not great, you know, cause like they, they lost to West Brom in the cup, obviously, lost to Swansea away. Um, but Salah, 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 can he stop scoring? Ever. Um, <laughs> you know, I was looking through his stats because he's got what, 29 for the season, I think now. In eight Premier, in eight Champions League games, he scored in five of them. Mm. You know, so it's about keeping him quiet. Um, as we've often said with Liverpool, the, the problems are at the back. So, Clavan and Gomez are probably out, which means that Alexander Arnold might be playing right back again. You know, Van Dijk and Matic, fair enough. Robertson left back, no problem with that. But Alexander Arnold will be a weak link at right back. And, uh, because I, I, I don't think they'll go three at the back. Yeah, so. He thinks, he thinks he's Garrett Bale, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. well, he's, he's a kid, so of course he does. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Porto are missing a player. They're missing a defensive midfielder, Danilo Pereira. Um, he got injured last month. And he's, he's a, he's a really good player for them. He's a bit of a linchpin. So he's going to be a big miss. He could be back, but I don't think he will be. He didn't play the weekend. Um, just, just checking my notes, which are, as usual, written in incomprehensible English. <laughs> so what oh. do you see then, Dan? What are you predicting that uh, Porto will try and, uh, they'll just let Liverpool at them and they'll try and, try and score in a counter? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that, you know, because, um, I mean, Liverpool know that this, this is, again, this is the kind of game where they need to win and then bring them back for a, um, bring them back uh, to Liverpool and have like a, um, an easier time of it. Mm. Uh, so, so Liverpool, um, they've got, uh, West, they've actually got a break, I think, this weekend, uh, cause they're not in the FA Cup. And they've got West Ham, Newcastle, uh, like in the, in around Porto, they play at home to Newcastle, which is normally a barnstorming game. And then afterwards they got Man U away. Ooh. So, you know, they're, they're going to want a positive result from this, whereas Porto, I think, know that if they can keep Liverpool out, then they've got a chance of nicking it away. So I'd go, I'd go for a low-scoring game. Uh, unders then, yeah, so 2.0, 2.08, around 2.1 you'd probably get. Yeah, yeah, well, I looked at this because um, I, uh, I, I got evens this morning for the under two and a half goals. Um Porto scored seven times in their last two league games. Liverpool have scored nine in their last four. So you'd think that like the, the bookies would be like looking at overs, but I think it's going to be a really tight game. Mm. Um, so I'm going to go with I'm going to go with unders at two uh, at evens. Okay, good man. And we'll move on then to uh, to the big one. So uh, Real Madrid are taking on PSG in what would be the wonder tie of the round for sure. This is the one all the neutrals are going to be watching. Well, all the ones that aren't out. <laughs> on Valentine's night, anyway. Uh, Real Madrid, 2.42. The draw, 3.67. PSG, 2.79. Overs. Overs is awful. Over 2.5 goals is 1.45. Over 3.5 goals is 2.13. Both teams to score is a ridiculous 1.4. And the handicap is uh, zero. Yeah, I looked at this one earlier, and I've got to be honest with you. Um, 12 months ago, this would have been a glamour type but at the moment. I don't know. Um, Real Madrid, uh, they stuffed Sociedad on the weekend. 5-2. I think Ronaldo's 43rd hat-trick. Um, he scored in that game. But Real, 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 they're just not great defensively, are they? Um, you look at, um, I think I, I, me and Paddy were talking about, um, the, the game they played against Levante. And there was a clip of, um, Sergio Ramos going mad at his teammates, the, uh, the equaliser Patini scored. Because, you know, Ramos was trying to lead the team by example, scored the first goal, and he's trying to do everything, and he still gets let down by, um, I can't remember who it was in the middle. And, um, yeah, Levante scored in the 89th minutes, they drew 2-2. Um, 
You know, in the last four league games, Real Madrid have scored 18 goals. Oh, nice. But they haven't kept a clean sheet. Mm. You know, and it's all very well and good going, going out and scoring goals every week. But if you can't keep a clean sheet, you know, and, and these are games where you need that kind of defensive strength. I, I was reading something, because um, you remember last year, Barcelona uh, against Paris, uh, Saint-Germain, yeah. and it was, um, like, both games, like, huge score lines. And the reason that... Uh, People saying the reason is is because, but teams like Barcelona and Paris Saint Germain are just used to racking up lots of goals in the domestic because uh, you know domestic leagues because they can't be touched. But their defense is lacking because of that. So when they play each other, all of a sudden they can't defend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, which is why both teams' are score is like one point. I, I got one point three six this morning, Ugh. and you go, had to go over evens for three and a half um, to you know to go over three and a half goals to get. A bet above evens on the overs market. Yeah, yeah. Um, you look at injuries. Uh, so PSG, they rested Cavani and Thiago Silva at the weekend, but they played Neymar, who got kicked to shreds by Toulouse. He scored, but after the game, it's like both his feet are wrapped up in ice. Um, and you've got to wonder, will he be fit? I'm sure he will be, but... Uh, I want to say I think Paris Saint-Germain will win, but I know they won't. This, this is the kind of game where Real Madrid will come out and, and, and show them that, yeah, we can score goals and we can defend and we'll be fine. Mm. Um, and it'll be like a 2-1, 3-1 to Real Madrid. And no doubt Cristiano Ronaldo will again bag a couple. And they'll bang on about him forevermore again. <laughs> as, you, as you can tell, dear listener, I am not a fan of the Cristiano Ronaldo L- Lionel Messi hype machine. I think it's all hype. <laughs> I really do. And um, you know, okay, so Cristiano Ronaldo has scored forty three hat tricks in La Liga, um, but against what kind of defenses? And I had a mate who went to a Barcelona game, for example, and he said Barcelona like. The, he said, like, people were moaning in England about Manchester United getting de- uh, decisions at Old Trafford. So there was nothing compared to Barcelona. They could, they could have machine gunned, uh, the striker down <laughs> in, in the box and still not given away a penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're weird, you know, even, uh, uh when I, I went to see them against Juve in the, in the final in Berlin and, you know, walking in, uh, it's it's not even that I really want the Juve to win. It's just I wanted Barcelona fans to lose, <laughs> you know, because they're just they're they're like they're way more arrogant than Man United fans. Way worse. Way, yeah, way worse. I just can't. I can't. I can't deal with it. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, uh, "Oh yeah, you know, this is the important one. Who do you support, Madrid or Barcelona?" I was like, "Neither. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Neither. The league is crap." Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. But this, this is the kind of thing though, I, 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 I would definitely agree with you, Dan. I think we're going to see a, a different Real Madrid uh, in this because, I mean, this is, this is the only thing they can win now this year, you know, so they have to go, go oh, out yeah. for this. Their That's league it, form it? is just, uh, and I think they're going to put their league form behind them and just say, right, this is it. And, and the old heads, Sergio Ramos, Ronaldo, uh, Bale, Modric, I think they're all going to raise their game and just say, nah, come on, let's, let's, let's get our, Get our crap together and, 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 and do this because, you know, PSG, they're, they're the pretenders to the throne kind of thing. And, and, and I think Real are going to be like, nah, nah, not on our turf, baby. Mm. And, and I've got to be honest, as much as I, I don't like Real Madrid, PSG are even worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember PSG back in the days of Leonardo. I loved Leonardo. I thought he was a great player. Um, but you know, you look at it now and it's just like petro dollars and dodgy human rights records and all that kind of crap behind it. And, ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah. No thank you. Yeah. So. Right then, uh, uh, yeah, so make a decision then. What's your tip? Real Madrid to win. Right, so good stuff. Right then, Dan, sure that'll do us. We'll be back on Wednesday with our Combined 11 uh, podcast. We haven't picked the teams yet, so you'll have to wait till Wednesday to find out. And then we'll be back on Thursday with our normal uh, preview of the Premier League, Championship and European uh, football as well. Dan, where can I find you on the internet? You can find me, um, Pro Tips to Dan, all one word on Twitter, Pro Tips to Dan, all one word on Facebook. I'm generally hanging around on the Facebook Pro Tips UK page. So you can 
talk to us there. Take the mic because uh, Birmingham City lost again this weekend. Or ask for, uh, if you need any help or advice uh, with uh, how to bet or how to find good bets, then sure, come ask. Um, I don't give fixed tips, though, and I don't know about sure bets. So um, can't help you there. Sorry. Yeah, but we will help you. Come on over to the website. We'll help you figure out how to use... Uh, not that it's very difficult, but we'll help you. We'll help point you in the right direction of how to use the Pro Tipster website. There's some absolutely brilliant tipsters on there, doing so so well every day, and it's very easy to find them. Just go to protipster.com, up in the top, you'll see the tipsters uh, button. Hit that, and then just play around then with the stats. Who has the highest yield, the best hit rate, things like that, and uh, you can follow people's tips there. Put them into your coupons, all that kind of stuff, and you can do all this without spending a penny, without losing losing any money to bookies you can follow people for a while and if it's if you're if you're making virtual profit then you can start putting some money down you can get me a pro tips to pod on twitter and pro tips to paddy on facebook and just like dan uh, we're always hanging around the facebook page um pro tips to uk so you can get us there right we'll be back then wednesday and thursday with more podcasts but for me and dan good luck enjoy the champions league football thanks for listening everybody don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster EN or ProTipster IRL. Bye.